Video games are amazing. They give you a visual medium that the viewer can interact with. There is so much that can be done with this medium to really engage the player. However, so often I see a stiff and bland cutscene that involves two or more characters just standing still and talking. At that point, you should just be writing a book. What's the point of even having this visual medium if you don't use it at all? It's basically just having an illustration in a book at that point. Today I'm going to tell you how I go about creating an engaging cutscene that makes full use of the visual medium that is video games. Like I said before, cutscenes are most easily recognized as bad if they have no movement. Especially in an engine such as RPG Maker where we're working with more stiff, pixel art sprites, having exaggerated character movements are important. Consider an animated show. Most of the time, character interactions are very grandiose and dramatic. Even in scenes where characters are sad or don't have a reason to move so much, where they do move, it's exaggerated. These dramatic movements really capture the viewer's attention and make for a more versatile and animated scene. With RPG Maker especially, if you're using the default graphics then you can't do subtle movements of the face like if it were a live action show or a 3D game with realistically rendered graphics. This is a top-down pixel graphics engine. Cutscenes are from this top-down perspective, so making sure the player can visually see what characters are doing in addition to reading it is very important. Characters should react to dialogue, such as backing away at their being threatened or falling to the ground if they've been punched. This isn't an engine for subtle movements. Having things like the entire character sprite move backwards from the shock of hearing of their parents' death is much more visually interesting than just changing the face graphic to a slightly downturned line. Do. Not. Have. A 20 minute long cutscene. There are exceptions to this rule of course, but almost always if I'm sitting in a 20 minute long cutscene, regardless of how animated it is, I will lose interest. You can be dramatic in your writing, but dragging things on for an unnecessary length of time, over explaining a point, or slamming the player with a ton of exposition in one cutscene is not good. If you're writing so much dialogue that one character's turn of speaking bleeds through two or more dialogue boxes, generally I'm going to say, no yucky, don't do that. Pacing is very important in a cutscene. Video games are an interactable medium. There needs to be actual gameplay at some point, so consider breaking up that 20 minute cutscene into many smaller parts and incorporating gameplay in between. For example, take a look at games such as To the Moon and Fighting Paradise. These games are entirely story driven, and most of the game is cutscenes, however the developer is a master of pacing and is very talented in keeping players involved in a game, even if that game has no kill kill bam bam. Production value is important. It can add interest and intrigue to an otherwise dull scene. Make sure to make use of emotes, animations, tent screen, and other on-screen effects to add character to a scene. Consider adding plugins as well to enhance your game's visuals, or just modifying the screen in some way to make a scene stand out. Make sure to keep all things in moderation though, as overdoing the production of a scene could end up making the actual contents of the scene much worse. This is something I personally don't pay as much attention to as I should. Always, always, always write out dialogue in Grammarly or other software with spellcheck before putting it into RPG Maker. Spelling is one of the biggest issues RPG Maker devs have, and while it isn't something that often comes to the front of your mind while creating a cutscene, it is just as important as anything else you could include in a scene. Check. Your. Spelling. Please. For mine and every other Let's Player's sake. This is the part of the video where I give my opinion on what I believe makes a good cutscene. None of this is required, but it is what I believe makes a cutscene better. First thing I want to address is switching up the type of text box. I think it is very visually satisfying when you swap between different methods of displaying text when doing different things. I use the Galv Message Styles plugin to add a lot of variety to the way I show dialogue. In my own game, Amy, I use the message pop-up window when displaying dialogue over interactable objects or to display character thoughts. However, when I am creating a cutscene, I switch to using the default method of displaying text and show character busts over top. You know, that actually reminds me, character busts are an important addition to a game as well. Even if your game isn't a visual novel, I feel like it adds so much character and expression to a scene that is otherwise difficult to obtain. 
If you're not an artist like me, you'll have to commission the artwork, which isn't free. However, the amount of versatility it adds to a scene is worth it in my opinion. In addition to that, editing character sprites, even in a small way, adds a ton to a scene's movement. I'm not an artist in any way, but I can still take the existing art I have and modify it in a small way that is very easy to do, and it adds a lot of character to a scene. Even just slightly moving the position of a sprite's hand for a door opening animation, or just slapping two sprites together to make it look like they're hugging adds a ton to a scene. Basically, what I'm getting at is customize where possible. Don't just leave the engine as it comes because it's easier. Modify things and make them your own. Make your game stick out in some way. Even if you can't make an entirely new tile set on your own, you don't need to. You can customize what you already have and make it stand out. Yes, even the RTP can look good. Uh, yep, that's about all I've got. Hopefully this video is able to help you out, my croutons. Until next time, goodbye.